For each commencement ceremony, one graduate is chosen to speak on behalf of the graduating class. To be selected for this honor, students must not only demonstrate academic success, but they must also exemplify the values of our institution. The graduate chosen for this ceremony is Mr. Kevin Carricker, who is receiving his Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Mr. Carricker has been highly active and involved during his time at SIUE. He is the president and founder of the SIUE Alliance for Students Against Poverty. He is also the president of the professional business fraternity Delta Sigma Pi. He has served as a student leader for an alternative spring break trip to the Cherokee Nation and has coordinated more than 50 projects related to professionalism, fundraising, and community service. Currently, Mr. Carricker is working as a global operations project coordinator intern for the Savas Company in Town and Country, Missouri, and is the owner of Cafe Book Buyers in Edwardsville. When he is finished with his internship, Mr. Carricker will be opening a new business, Mr. Nice Guy Bubble Tea. And he just got married this afternoon. <laughs> Mr. Carricker, it is my pleasure to welcome you as the student speaker representing your graduating class. One second. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I'm truly honored to be standing here today and to be talking to you, my peers. So I have a lot of stories, some fascinating, some humorous, and um, some really, really weird ones. Nikki. Where are you at? You know what I'm talking about. Wherever she's at, she knows. With your permission, I would like to share a story with you. Is that all right? All right, good. Though before I begin, I want to say that with this particular story, it's nothing special. There's no amazing climatic outcome. It's not a roller coaster ride that will have you on the edge of your seats. However, it does serve a very fundamental and important purpose, and it's given me an entirely different outlook on life. Growing up as a kid, I primarily had two big dreams. The first was to be a professional wrestler. And no, I don't mean amateur Olympic wrestling, and yes, I do mean jumping off of ladders and wearing tight spandex WWE wrestling. I really and truly wanted to be a professional wrestler. The second dream was to make low-budget, independent action films starring Jean-Claude Van Damme out of Bulgaria. And for those who don't know, Jean-Claude Van Damme, the muscles from Brussels, wham bam, thank you ma'am, was one of the biggest action stars from 1988 to 1999. So most of my life was spent on the internet, talking on the Van Damme forums, searching news sites, trying to find information and learn about Van Damme and the industry. Every day was devoted to Jean-Claude Van Damme. And I talked to many producers, directors, actors, etc., those who were involved in the industry. One night, it's around 2 in the morning, and I'm on the Van Damme message boards, conversing with the other Van Damme fanatics from around the world, and the director of the newest Van Damme film mentioned a private screen in LA for his new movie. Further, I could attend this screening, this screening that the director and other producers and executives would be present at. Now, I'm living in O'Fallon, Missouri, off of Highway K at the time. So to California, that's a 26-hour drive, and I needed to be there around noon Pacific time. That would give me with the time difference, driving straight, just a few hours of rest. My father was home, and my father was sleeping, so I woke him up. 
And I said, give me all the money you have in your wallet, (laughs) and I'll pay you back. He was very confused, and I guess he had every right to be. I told him I needed to leave for California immediately, and I don't think I have enough money to get there. We exchanged a few dialogues, but he could tell I was dead set. He gave me what he had, and I packed a quick bag, and I jumped in my car, and I headed to California from O'Fallon, Missouri at about now 4 in the morning, and I had about 34 hours to get there. So I'm driving, and I'm tired. All the adrenaline is wearing off, and I'm definitely feeling it. I'm falling asleep behind a wheel, and I'm swerving all over the place. At this point, I'm around Amarillo, Texas, and I'm at the point where I'm in such a bad condition that I'm a danger to myself and to the others on the road. There's a really beautiful rest stop around Amarillo, and I stop there to try and get a few hours of sleep. Now, I guess it's appropriate to say that at this point, I had a lot of bad things going for me. I'm tired, I'm time constrained, and I don't have near enough money to make it to California back, let alone California. Very bad forecasting on my behalf. I wasn't going to make it. When I awoke, I turned back and I headed home. Upon returning home, there was my father. He looked at me, and I'll never forget what he said, because it's all he said and nothing more. He looked me directly in the eye, and he said, I told you you wouldn't make it. And he was absolutely right. He did tell me that, and I didn't make it. But I didn't fail. I didn't fail. No, I was successful in validating myself. I validated my vision. I had a vision, but it subsisted somewhere in my mind. I never acted upon it. So when I left that early morning, and I went for my drive, and I acted upon my vision, I knew, at that moment, without any doubts, where I wanted to be. This is what I want, and someday I'm going to get it. And every day since then has been building towards that dream. Everything I've accomplished at SIUE, it all started during that drive. That drive that seemingly, and in some people's mind, accomplished nothing. So how does one realize their dreams? What are the correct steps? We all have a vision, and one way or another, everyone sitting before me has an idea of where they're going to go and where they want to be. It's your vision, and it's exclusive only to you. Will you ever have the opportunity to realize that vision? Will you ever act upon it, validate it? How does someone achieve their dreams? Those are not easy questions to answer, and there's no definite answer. What we do know is that you're all in a very privileged situation. As of right now, you're all graduates of Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. You've all been challenged, tested, pushed, pressured, and even intimidated. Yet, here you are, alive and well, big smiles, ready to drink. (laughs) SIUE has given you four years of life's test and you've all passed. However, for this particular test, you won't be receiving a grade, it won't be on Blackboard, so don't bother to check. This test came with only one prize, a degree. A simple certificate with your name, major, and nothing more. It's weird when you think of it that way, but your degree is only as valuable as the institution that provided it. Fortunately, for everyone in this room, this institution demands high merit. Low tuition, high standards, James Dixon. But where does this value derive from? Is it perceived from the accreditations? Is it judged by the wisdom of its employed professors? No. It is derived from you, the graduating seniors today. The graduating seniors last semester and the semesters before, and all the graduating seniors in the near and distant future. The supposed value that this institution has gained has been in proportion to the effort, time, and energy of its graduates. SIU has challenged you, given you the tools to succeed. But not everyone will. 
You will not all succeed. That is a fact. Even though you have everything you need to succeed, you will not all succeed in containing contentment. How satisfied are you with how your lives turned out? That bar contentment, for some of you, will never be met. Because some of you will lose your vision. It's that vision which will guide you and will motivate you to resemble the individual your mind has formed, but you'll lose it. A friend once told me everyone in your life will underestimate you. And to some degree, I believe that's true. Even those who support you and will be there for you won't truly understand your vision. Only you will truly understand the complexity of your vision. Only you will grasp its depth. And for some, others won't support you. Others will discourage you. But whether they're right or they're wrong, it doesn't matter. Don't let them answer life's questions for you. Don't let them answer whether your dreams are practical, whether they're achievable. Don't let them answer what is the safe thing to do, what is the smartest choice. Don't let them determine who you're going to be. Don't let them kill your vision. K-N-O-W this. The greatest success in life is achieved by overcoming your obstacles, facing your fears, and dealing with the difficulties and challenges that are presented to you. Each small achievement and personal development should be seen as a step towards success. Don't lose your vision. Don't let others obstruct your view. And most importantly, live by the attributes that have always led to success and have always been admired. Intelligence, hard work, discipline, courage, loyalty, generosity, love. Take a chance, listen to your heart, and if you fall, you won't fall far. SIU has provided you with a safety net. You have the tools and the mindset to get back up. Learn from your past and keep mo moving towards that vision. The value of your degree is purely reflective of others realizing their vision. It's now your turn to uphold the value of SIUE and pave an easier path for the graduates that will follow. Thank you. I do believe that may be the first time John Claude Van Damme has been mentioned at a university commencement. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Carricker, for your fascinating and humorous story and for encouraging your class to go out and achieve their visions.